Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to another telecast of a time. It's time for restoration. I'm so excited to have you uh, to be a part of this telecast today. God truly is good. He's amazing. And I pray that he is just as good to you uh, as he is to me. Well, I'm just so happy. I want to read a scripture uh, to you. I'm still feasting off the manor of our Resurrection Sunday, last Sunday. I trust that many of you who normally don't go to church found your way to somebody's church on last Sunday. And I pray that you heard a good word that bless you. Now, guess what? You gotta keep feeding yourself. You gotta stay under the umbrella of the word of God. That is the only way that you and I are gonna be able to make it from day to day. We got an enemy out there whom the Bible says in John 10, 10, the thief cometh not but to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that more abundantly. Well, the scripture says, and he himself gave some to be apostles and prophets some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's what Christ died for. This is what he rose for. He went into the lower parts of hell. He set those that were held captive. He set them free. And when he rose, he gave gifts unto men through the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, you are the next evangelist. You are the next pastor. You're the next teacher. You're the next apostle. God has a work for you in your life. And so I'm very excited uh, to share with you today that we have an outstanding standing guest today. I tell you, he is a long-term friend. He's also the husband of our evangelist Johnson, who sits on our board as a board of directors member and also the evangelist of our church. His name is Ronald Johnson. He is our deacon, long-standing deacon, probably over 20 years uh, we've known each other. And uh, the Lord has just blessed this young man's life. I'm telling you from the inner city of Washington, D.C. to the hills of West Virginia, <laughs> God has truly brought him from a mighty long way. So Pastor Renee is going to do an interview with him, and I know that you're going to be very excited. You're going to be very encouraged and uplifted based on this man's testimony and where he has come from. You know, all of us have a story. All of us have come from something, but God to the uttermost has saved. He has delivered us and brought us out. And I'm here to tell you, if he can do it for me, he sure enough will do it for you. We just simply have to trust him. We have to trust that Jesus has given us these gifts so we can edify the body of Christ. This is what this all this these series of broadcasts are all about. It's bringing people who have come from uh, unpopular territory, unpopular lives. I'm telling you, God has done a work through them. So you might believe that God can do the same thing in you. Isn't that exciting? Oh my God, I'm so excited today to know that God is still transforming lives. And I'm just simply doing my part as a bishop in the Lord's church to encourage your hearts, to let you know that all is not lost. You have faith. You do. You just don't realize it. I'm here to tell you, you have the faith. You can be whatever Christ says you can be. And whatever it is that he has in store for you, maybe, some, maybe somebody right now who's watching me, you're struggling in your faith. You're wondering, Lord, what are you doing with my life? Well, I'm here to tell you, God has the answer. And so through this young man's testimony, this man's testimony, I am sure you are going to be encouraged before it's all over. So I want you to sit back. I want you to relax. I want you to enjoy Deacon Ronald Johnson Sr. as the man of God shares his testimony through Pastor Renee uh, interviewing him. I just want you to just let the Lord have his way. Let him speak to your heart. Let him encourage you. And we're going to come back at the close of that, broad, of, of that interview and we'll share more with you. God bless you and I'll see you in a few minutes. Good morning and welcome again to a time of restoration. I am Renee Hutnall, the co-pastor of Life in the Word Church of Jesus Christ and so thankful 
to be alive today. I hope that you're glad that you're here with us. I'm telling you, God has a word for you today, and we are just elated about what the Lord is doing. God is moving by His Spirit, and He is a spirit, and He is looking for someone to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Today we have an exciting guest, our deacon, Ronald Johnson, and he's been with our church for over 10 years, he and his family, and we are just thankful that he would agree to come and just share his testimony today about how God delivered him from those streets in Washington, D.C. I'm telling you, it has been a struggle for him, but God is a deliverer and he's also a preserver. And today we just want you to sit back and just enjoy what the Lord is saying through this vessel. The Bible lets us know that they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. Oh my God, thank you, Lord. The word of his testimony is going to help someone today. And you may be sick, you may just be going through some issues in life, whatever it is, but this same God that brought him up out of that bondage, out of the streets of D.C., doing God knows what, we'll find out a little bit more, is the same God that can heal you today. So let me introduce again Ronald Johnson. God bless you. Good bless to have you. you this morning. Thank you. Thank, thank you man. for coming. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. So tell me, uh, Deacon Johnson, um, when you were out there on the streets in D.C., what were you up to? A uh, little bit this, a little bit that, a little bit all kinds of stuff, so yeah, so. Okay, so a little bit like what? Uh, running the street, doing God knows things that I shouldn't have been doing, something that I'm not proud of. Uh, my past, did, uh, some of the things I was doing, something I'm not really proud of, but thank God that he brought me out of it and uh, turned my life around. Amen, amen. So I, I take it. Um, that one of the things that you were involved with was drugs? Drugs, mm -hmm. alcohol, all, okay. all kinds of stuff. Okay. You name it, how you say you name it, you claim it, how they try to do now. Mm -hmm. But back then, uh, when I was doing things, I, I did it out of peer pressure. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. I did it because at the time I could do it, mm -hmm. you know, and the road I was going down. It wasn't, and especially after all these kids, that I, my children, mm -hmm. you know, I got to thinking about that too, you know, because it was survival, you know, so mm -hmm. I was trying to survive. Okay, okay, so let's uh, back up a little bit. How old were you when you started kind of running the streets? And I started when I, at an early age, like 13, 14 years old, okay. you know, till I got a chance at the age of 17 uh, to get my own place because a lot of things I was doing, I couldn't do it in my parents' house. Okay. You know, out of respect for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, when, back when I was growing up, life was a little different than it is now. Okay. You know, uh, back then, uh, we, you honor your moms and your dads, you right, know, right. and that will make your life grow. You'd be older, mm -hmm. you know. So, and back then, you know, I knew I couldn't do it in the house, so I had to find my own way to do what I had to do. Okay, to so at 13 years old, you started doing some things out there in the street out there that in the you street. weren't proud of. You weren't proud um, of. Taking drugs. Doing drugs, really? and I had wow. to fight. I, okay. I, I had to do a lot of fighting. Okay, so you, you were know. OG, huh? <laughs> well, you, if that's what you want to call mm -hmm. it, OG. But it was, like I say, it was a f survival. You know, I okay. was in D.C., but I stayed in Baltimore a lot more than I did in Washington. Okay. You know, and then if you out there like that, you listen to how the laws is. Laws change. Like uh, Maryland law, law was different from D.C. Uh, Virginia law was different from D.C. Mm -hmm. And if you out there doing what things I used to do, you have to keep up with the law just wow. in case if anything happened. Wow, you know what I mean? that's interesting yeah. to hear. Okay, so at 13 years old, um, running the streets and doing things you didn't have any business, you said that that came from peer pressure? Peer pressure, and then if, if you out there, you know, like, you know, like I was saying, it, it's survival, you know. Yeah. I, I, I used to box and all that, and we take trips, and and I was one of the kind of guys that I used to always, I, I had a job, I worked hustling bottles, all kinds of stuff back in there. Then that day, mm -hmm. you can hustle bottles and get money, mm -hmm. or go down to the Safeway and take some people grocery home. Okay. You know, so I always had money. Mm -hmm. So if you always had money, you know, some dealers would say, look, he got money. I want to get some of that money. You know what I mean? What can I do to get that money from this young man? Mm, okay. You know, so they started showing it, 
showing me stuff, smoking stuff, mm -hmm. you know, then you always got to realize everything ain't free. Hey. Mm -hmm. You have to pay a price okay. for whatever you do. And then when I got introduced to cocaine, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it was a friend of mine, you know, that knowing that I had money, and you know, one thing led to another thing. Okay. You know, we was doing one thing, then one thing led to another thing. You know, and then you have to realize people arrive, uh, will try to arrive off you, knowing that you got money. Mm -hmm. If they have a habit, a little stronger than you, mm -hmm. they're gonna try to get you in contact with them to help them out. Okay, so you're really speaking to the heart of those who are um, in that mode of surviving and yes. really trying to at some point in time, do the right thing, but then you're kind of drawn in drawn because in. Yes. of people seeing you have, you know, a little bit of cash, right. and then they want that cash, and, right. you know, then the next thing you, you're you saying is that there's a price to pay. It's a price to pay. Everything ain't free, you know, like, uh, you know, you, you go, even nowadays, mm -hmm. you know, it's the same thing. You know, you have to be very careful who you deal with, mm -hmm. who you associate yourself with, right? because sometimes misery love company, mm -hmm. yes. and that ain't nothing but the truth, mm -hmm. because, you know, I can sit there and, and tell them my story, mm -hmm. but sometimes when you tell your story, they, a lot of people ain't going to believe your story until they get caught up themselves. I hear you. You know, I so, you. and that's another thing that I'm so glad that God brought me out of, okay. because now I listen more, mm -hmm. I can hear more, and then I can see my money more, or the <laughs> things, yeah, because mm -hmm. you know, when you're out there, mm -hmm. especially that co cocaine, mm -hmm. you know, so all it takes is one little dab of it, so, and you broke. Yeah, so wait a minute, you, you were on cocaine, um, do you feel like you were at it? No, I didn't feel like I was at it, because number one, Money was no object to me at that time. Okay. You know, because I can get, I had no problem getting money. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was just the friends that was hanging around me, mm -hmm. and I was hanging around them because it, 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 it's, it's two ways, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I had the opportunity and I was old enough to know better. Mm -hmm. But by me out there and I'm getting all this, fr oh, you know, everybody know me. Okay. You know what I mean? okay. I'm on camera now, but everybody still know me. I'm still I'm to that to agree when I say no. That's what I mean. No, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, and, and and when it get to certain things, you know, you you must tell yourself no, and you must ask now uh, by me and my God, the God I serve, that He protects me. You know, He was protecting me then, and He's still protecting me now. Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. He watched. Once you, once you go into Christ, you become a new creature. Mm -hmm. You know, all things is behind me. Mm -hmm. The things I used to do, I don't do no more. Amen. There ain't Amen. no way I can get back into that now. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? So how did you come out? I came out, I came out, to me, I, I come out pure gold. You okay. know what I mean? So how did you come out? What, what happened in uh, the process? Oh, uh, uh, well, it happened, something happened to me on the Easter. You know, uh, I went around, my son was two years old, he'd be 29 now. He was two, I was going around to the store to, to buy something from the store. And I normally have change, you know. These two young guys asked me for some change, I didn't have it. You know, if I would have had it, I would have gave it to them. But as soon as I turned my head, I wound up in the hospital. Hmm. You know, these two young guys left me for dead, wow. you know. And, and, and this is a true story, you know. I don't have to pretend or nothing like that. I still got indentations in my side of my face, and the first time I ever had stitches right under my chin. I, I've been fighting all these all these years, but when that happened to me, it was a wake up call okay. on the Easter. Okay. God is for real. Mm -hmm. He said it wasn't time for me to go like mm -hmm. that yet. Amen. You know what I mean? Especially after all that I done done, mm -hmm. and, and and I was I got a kind heart. Mm -hmm. My heart's still kind. Mm -hmm. I would give. I'm, I ain't like, I ain't no giver. I would give, mm -hmm. even to people I don't even know. The people I hung out with, and what, I, 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 like, you know what, what, what makes me what make me laugh about this? God said He'll supply you your every need. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the things I had, guys was just hanging around me because I can supply. Gotcha. They gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know. And so these two young men, they banked you. Left you for dead. Left me for dead. Okay, and from that experience, what happened once you 
found yourself in the hospital? When I found myself in the hospital, I know uh, my grandmothers, uh, they was praying for me, my moms and them was praying for me, and, and I had some strong background of uh, 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 people praying, love my it. family love it. loving, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and ever since then, because I used to always call my grandmoms, and when I when I when I go through, you know, uh, some of the things that I say I might was thinking about doing okay. to people, mm -hmm. I talk to them, awesome. you know. But God rest their soul, you know. I I I I never try to get my moms and dads involved into my street, mm -hmm. you know. But now, in reality, now if anything go wrong, I always I talk to my moms now more okay. than I, I have did. Okay. Uh, because I used to do it with my grandmothers, right. you know what I mean? Both of them, you know. But I talk to my moms a little bit more now mm -hmm. about my situations and my problems. Mm -hmm. You know, some things I can't even tell my wife, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Not like I don't try to, but sometimes she would never understand me mm -hmm. because of some of the things I went through. In life, I understand. You know understand. what I mean. Instead of putting that burden on her, because you know sometimes you tell people your story, they look at you kind of weird and mm -hmm, funny, mm -hmm. you know. But life goes on. Right, right. You know? And so what what you're saying is that uh, at that point in time, you had some people praying you in praying the me, faith, praying me, <laughs> and in. so you decided to change your life from that I changed, point. I in changed time. my life. Awesome. You know, I, I started going back to church. Uh, uh, I had to sing in two choirs, uh, uh, the male chorus and the uh, shepherd's choir, mm -hmm. you know, and I went back to uh, the whole, my original church, uh, Bishop Joseph Weathers, mm -hmm. uh, 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 Holy Temple, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I, my life turned around. I, I got into, to me, after I got, the Lord never left me. Mm -hmm. I left him because some of the things I was doing, I wasn't trying to bring it into the church, mm -hmm. wasn't trying to bring it to the house, you know, as far as my parents' house. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, God God is a good God. Amen. So talk to our viewing audience for a brief moment about God never leaving you. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's in his word that God say he'll never leave you or forsake you. And believe me, it is true. He would never leave you. He'd sustain you. You know, I can go back down to Washington there, and I see some of the older guys that I used to run with, you know, and then I look at myself, I, I look at me, I say, whoa. I look at these guys, they barely walking, barely talking, you know, and, and I look at myself, I say, look, I feel just like a young man. You know, I feel real young, and, and I thank the Lord. It was nobody but God, you know. It, it was none of my own, you know. Even though when I got hit, you know, it was an eye-opener. It was a call, it was a wake-up call, you know, and I have, to numerous kids, you know, and I thank the Lord when I left the city with my five babies, all of them graduated from high school, all of them did a little bit of college. What, 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 what more can you ask for, you know, and I love them all, and I, I, I just, you know, thank God for that, you know. He said, He'll never leave you or forsake you. Hold tight on that word. Just open up the Bible. You know, I, uh, and get to reading it, you know. Mm -hmm. Ask God for what you need. Pray, you know. Pray to your Heavenly Father. If you don't see it when you want to see it, believe me, it's on the way. It's on the way. Awesome. Just thank it you so much. Thank I, you. I just thank you for encouraging us today. <laughs> and I really do feel that that restoration because when I think about how God was always with you, I believe that, it comes from some praying grandparents, some yes, praying yes. parents, and he had a hedge of protection around you. A hedge. And even when the enemy tried to take your life, he couldn't. He Lord couldn't. God. He couldn't. And then at the appointed time, God brought you in. He brought you into brought in. his sheepfold to serve him. And since we've been knowing you, you know, you have been a man that has been consistently serving the Lord and loving God. No, hey, listen, none of us are perfect. None of us are perfect, but we are God's children. And when it comes to us serving the Lord, it's not that we're not going to fall back sometimes and do some things that we're not proud of. But thanks be unto God, as we've heard that word, that he will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. He's with us always. And we can count on the fact that when we call on Jesus, 
during our dilemmas, that he is there to answer us. There's a scripture in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, and it says that, behold, all things are new. Let me start it over. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. To God be the glory. Being in Christ Jesus gives us a new reason and a new purpose for even living. Yes. Glory to God. A new, a new responsibility. It gives us a new obligation. It also gives us a new love. It gives us, it gives us new cravings and new desires. Mm -hmm. Being in Christ. This is a time of restoration for someone that's watching today. Because God is calling you. He's drawing you. You're not here by chance. You're not here by happenstance. God has purposely designed you to view this because you see a gentleman, you've heard his testimony about God's delivering power and God's saving grace. You're still here because of the grace of God. You have not been discounted. You have not been cast out. And you may think, well, I've done so many things. And this mm. is what this testimony was mm. all about. Him making so many poor decisions. Him trying to survive out there on the streets. And he was doing whatever he could do to just find some friends and find solace in life. But he had to realize one day that Jesus was there with him. And his life was so much better. It turned around when he gave his heart and his life to the Lord. You can find your life being better as well. Just surrender your all today. It's the time to come from up out of that sin and degradation. My God, it is time to begin a new walk with the Lord. Just open up your mouth and begin to thank him for mm -hmm. what he did on Calvary's cross. Yes, begin to just cry out to him and ask him, what must I do to be saved? God, he's able to fill your life with peace, with joy, with his presence, with love. Everything you need is available to you right now. So hold on to the master's hand. I love what this gentleman said tonight. Deacon Johnson, he will never leave you nor forsake you. And you have been here at a time of restoration. God bless you. This is my prayer today. Well, praise the Lord again. I tell you, wow, wasn't that an awesome interview? And the response from our Deacon Johnson, um, I can't say anything, but it was phenomenal. I'm telling you, this is what these series of broadcasts are all about, uh, dealing with ordinary people who have come from some serious lives and seeing the power of God restore them such as you've seen with Deacon Johnson. I'm telling you, God is amazing. And the same God that restored him is the same God who will restore you if you just give him a chance. Co-Pastor Renee gave us a scripture that I thought was, was, was very uh, informative to the point of why we're doing these broadcasts. That therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Some people have said, Bishop, why do you do what you do? Why do you work with these men? Why do you have these men around you? Because I believe in the regeneration of Jesus Christ. I believe Jesus wants to change lives. Listen, I'm not coming after the perfect people. I don't want to hang around the people who know it all and think they got it all together. I'm coming for those whose lives have been touched by the master's hand. Same as I. Those who have been blood washed and I'm telling you have come from some dangerous lifestyles, but God has surely transformed them. As you've heard with Deacon Johnson, he had some faithful and some people who loved him and cared for them. Maybe you're watching us and you feel like you don't have family. You don't have a grandmother or a mother that you can confide into. Well, I grew up with no parents, but I'm telling you, God will send good friends in your life. Deacon Johnson is a very good friend to me and he goes with me pretty much everywhere I go ministerially and I'm honored. I'm honored to work alongside with him in the ministry of Jesus Christ, he and his wife both. And I'm telling you, you don't have to be there to be alone. You too can find yourselves being supportive, being encouraging. He serves as an armor bearer to his bishop. He serves on the choir in our church. He prays for people in our church. Who would have thought the devil meant, for, meant it for evil, but God sure enough turned it around for his good. This is what I'm telling you, the power of God 
can change lives. I'm telling you, he won't tell us the deep stuff that he's gone through, but you can tell in his voice, you can tell in the conversation, he really has been through some things. And maybe there's some things you can't tell people about. And I'm gonna tell you something, we don't really wanna get in your business, but we wanna tell you that God can change you and you do not have to be disqualified. Wow, let me say that again. You are not disqualified, you are counted in. God has remembered you today. I am here as the messenger of Jesus Christ. Deacon Johnson is here. We are all here to share with you. You are not disqualified. There are so many suicides going around. You've seen it. You're seeing it in the news. Football players. I mean, people are just doing a, 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 a serious atrocity. We're murdering and we're killing ourselves because the, the satanic forces are in our heads and troubling us. But I'm here to tell you today. God has a destiny for your life. And I'm telling you, he'll do it, but you got to give him a chance. Well, why don't you come and visit us? The address is on your screen. You can visit us, visit us at the White Post Church in White Post, Virginia, 14401 Lord Fairfax Highway. And you can also visit us at the Harrisonburg Church. We meet there at four o'clock in Harrisonburg. And guess what? You're right, Deacon Johnson will be there. You can come and see him every Sunday. No, I'm just teasing. He comes every Sunday so often, but he tries to come as often as he can. But if you call me and say you want to meet him, we'll make sure he's there so you can meet him. Well, come and visit us and let the Lord continue to bless. I know you were touched by his testimony. Give us a call. Let us know what God is doing in your life so we can further counsel you. We're not here to, uh, to do anything but lead you to Christ. We believe you're the next new creation that God wants on his side. So why don't you come and join us? Why don't you be a part? If not this ministry, join with somebody else's ministry. Find a place to go to where those gifts can be manifested as we talk about in Ephesians chapter 4. And he gave gifts unto men. You are the next apostle, the next evangelist, preacher, teacher. God has a destiny for your life. Well, my time is almost gone. But I thank God for you allowing me to come into your home. And I pray that you will continue to listen. We have another guest that's coming on next week. And then lastly, we'll have a woman who will be coming and sharing her testimony on how the Lord filled her with the Holy Ghost in Bible class. <laughs> I'm excited about what God is doing in the lives of his people. So I trust you've enjoyed these series of message and you'll continue to watch. Well, God bless you. Thank you for your time and continue to tune in on next Sunday for a time of restoration. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to a time of restoration. Join us again next Sunday at 8.30 a.m. Also, you can join us live on Sunday mornings in White Post, 11 a.m. at 14401 Lord Fairfax Highway, or call us at 540-837-2429, for this is our time of restoration.